Hi friends, uh, this is Justin Boats with Inferno Mobile Recording Studio in the Chicago Park District. And uh, today I'm going to do a little tutorial on uh, using the web app BandLab to edit music online. So in this tutorial we're going to go over some very basic audio editing uh, like uh, cutting an audio track, importing audio, uh, adding simple fade-ins, fade-outs. Um, we'll take two audio tracks and um, uh, combine them together to um, <clears throat> to create a, a, a longer track and export that as an mp3 for use in um, dance projects, theater projects, what have you. And I'll also do a very short introduction to an AI music generating feature that BandLab has that can be a great way to get off the blank page or to quickly uh, generate some musical ideas that are not copywritten uh, that you can use in your um, park district activities. Uh, so the first thing you're going to want to do is go to BandLab.com and in the top right corner, you'll see the two uh, buttons, log in and sign up. If you haven't created an account, which uh, I imagine a lot of you haven't, uh, go ahead and sign up. You have a bunch of options for how to do that. I'm going to uh, just log in and I'm going to log in using my Gmail account here. And the first place it's going to take me to is a social media app. Uh, that uh, musicians who use BandLab can use to share their music with others, get feedback, um, and get inspired by other people's work. So uh, that's pretty cool. But what we're interested in is the, the BandLab Digital Audio Workstation. So over here in the top right corner, we've got this button that says Create. I'm going to press on that, and it's going to show two options. One, uh, is this new project, which we're going to go to. And the other is the song starter. This is that AI song generating tool that we'll, I mentioned that we'll look at later. I'm going to go to new project. And it gives you some options for like, let's say you want a song template to get inspired. Like you, you're, you, you want to, you're, you're new to songwriting and you want to experience like, okay, what, uh, how do s other musicians organize a song like with an intro outro all those different parts you can actually import a song template which is pretty cool um, you could just create beats add virtual instruments guitar bass uh, all kinds of stuff record vocals or sounds from your park um, remix those sounds in the sampler uh, but for our sake we're just gonna I'm just gonna take some tracks that I already have on my computer upload them and do some very uh, simple mixing and export them. So I'm going to X out of this quick start guide. And here we are with our blank slate. Um, up here we have where we can change our name. I'm going to call this uh, BandLab uh, Tutorial 101. And uh, we've got our name. There are paid features here if you want to, but we've been using the free band lab at Inferno for the last five years and it's very robust. There's a lot you can do with it. And so we've, I've never felt a need to, uh, to pay for, um, uh, any of the paid features. Uh, uh, one other thing I'll mention is that we I am accessing this audio workstation online, which means that you can you can get to BandLab if you have an account from any computer anywhere uh, just by going to the BandLab.com website and signing in. Uh, you could you know work on your music um, at library computers or school or friends computer, uh, and instantly have access to the songs you've been working on because they're saved in the cloud, uh, which is pretty awesome. You can also download, um, a, uh, band lab app for a Android or iPhone smartphone, um, and have access to band lab that way on, on your phone. Um, Today, this tutorial is just in the web browser, which is great and versatile and um, uh, 
uh, makes the, the the video tutorial a little easier. So uh, what we have here is that we you know we can add we can add all different kinds of tracks like we saw earlier. I could add a bass track, a drum track, uh, um, a guitar track, some other virtual instruments or sounds or samples. Um, uh, I can add um, a, a vocal track to record voice or audio, uh, but I I'm not going to do that. I just want to upload two tracks and and do a simple you know some simple cutting of it and fade in and out uh, uh, between them. So I'm going to click on this drop a loop or an audio file, and this is going to take me to uh, uh, my hard drive where I can choose um, a song to import. Okay, here's one. And you'll notice you can see this visualization of the sound. It kind of comes in strong. There isn't much of an intro here. It just starts making sound. It sounds like it just came in, uh, like it, it starts in the middle of a song. So to change that a little, I'm going to click on this right, uh, this white square and drag this line over a bit. And you'll see that that creates kind of this diagonal line or triangle from the beginning of the track to wherever I've placed this um, white square. And what that's communicating is we've just added a very simple fade in. So it's gonna, uh, that tells the computer to start this track at zero volume and slowly raise the volume uh, till we get to this, um, this square here. Let's see how that sounds. There we go. Uh, it's uh, uh, much less abrupt. That will work for this tutorial's purpose. And so now what I want to do is I actually want to go to the end of this track and I want to add another track and, and kind of blend them together. So first, I'm going to do a quick edit on this uh, track one. And I want to cut off some of the silence at the end we see here. So I'm going to just uh, hover over the end of this track, and that'll bring up this line with the two arrows. I'm going to click, and just moving the cursor to the left will cut, start to cut this, this track. Uh, I'm going to cut it right there. Great. So if I want to cut the track in the middle, I can uh, place my cursor on the timeline wherever I want to cut it. Let's say I want to cut this in half right here. I can then go to this drop down menu here. I can go to edit and select slice at playhead. And what that's going to do is slice the track into two parts right there. Let's do that again. There we go. So now we've got our two separate tracks. Uh, I actually don't need to do anything with that, but that's just to, to demonstrate. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to upload my second track um, to... Um, to mix with that first track. So I'm going to click here again. It's going to go to my hard drive. Uh, let's do um, just an AI music test. Um, let's see what that sounds like. OK, there we go. I've got my track. Um, and I'm going to drag this over so it begins right towards the end of that last one. Um, and just like I did earlier, First, I'm going to go to the first track, and I'm going to fade out. So fading out is, is the same process as fading in. I click on the white uh, rect uh, square, and, uh, and that will create this uh, ramp, uh, letting the computer know to kind of slowly turn the volume off. Now I'm going to the new track, and I'm going to fade in dragging the uh, square over to the right here. And I've, I've now created a little fade in, fade out, uh, and we can see what this sounds like. Uh, let me click on the timeline over here and press play and see what the fade in, fade out sounds like.
Nice. Okay, great. So uh, that's smooth enough for my purposes. I think this is done. I'm going to press save. And once this saves, I'm going to press publish. And uh, there we go. Not too, not too slow. Publish. And I'm not going to add any metadata like a description for the song or genre. I want to keep the song unlisted because this is kind of an in-house, uh, well, it's a demo. Um, and I don't need to share this with anyone on social media right now. We're just going to use it for park uh, purposes. I'm going to go down here to mastering and uh, set it to auto. This will just make sure that the sound um, of the track uh, will hopefully not be too loud or too soft if added to a playlist list. It'll be more or less uh, radio ready. I'm going to pl press publish. And great, the song is now published to my BandLab account. Now, where do I go if I want to download the song? I'm going to click on this uh, drop-down menu in the top left corner and exit the Digital Audio Workstation. And here I am where I have this track that I can share immediately with people. Like, let's say there's a team of people I want to share it with or campers. Uh, that might be interested in it. I can share this uh, online. I can also download the track, and that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to download this as an MP3. MP3 is great for uh, small file sizes that sound good uh, as audio files, so, uh, or sound pretty good. Uh, this is just going to be 4.59 megabytes. Not bad at all. Great. And... Uh, that will now download to my computer so I can share it with a team. But let's say I, um, there's one other thing, I, feature I want to share with you on here um, uh, when working on editing. Let's say you want to collaborate with a, a teammate at the parks uh, and you, you want to work on the song together, but you're not in the same location or at the same computer. Let's go back to the studio by pressing on that studio button. And under the publish button is this invite. So if I click on invite, I can copy a link to share with collaborators or a friend um, that will allow them to enter this digital audio workstation area and edit this song, this this uh, audio track with me, seeing the same things that I see, um, and uh, just kind of like you would in a in a Word or a Google document that you've shared with others, and you want um, you want it to be edited. You can do that in BandLab. That's pretty incredible, uh, pretty powerful. That's most of what I wanted to share in this tutorial. One last thing I will share is uh, if you just want to. Um, Let's say you want to generate some sound or song that's that uh, isn't a song you have in a in a playlist or somewhere on your computer. Uh, you want to you want to generate something that's that uh, is will not infringe on copyright and uh, and be able to use it in um, park district programming. Uh, you can actually use the song starter tool, which will help you generate uh, a song with AI. It's not, you know, they're not particularly great songs, but uh, it's it's a way to get off the blank page um, and or have something uh, uh, to, to mess around with if you need uh, just some quick music for something. Uh, and so I clicked on song starter and it brought me to this page where I can choose like, okay, what kind of... Um, what kind of sound am I looking for? Is there any particular genre? I'm going to go with ambient um, uh, because I want some, let's say, a background sound for some theater piece or something or dance project. Get started. In a few seconds, it is going to generate some song ideas. Okay, so uh, it's it's generated three different song parts that I can listen to. There's two. Three. 
three. And I can make some slight adjustments here. Um, if I go to the top, I could change the genre. I can change, do I want this to have kind of more of a bright sound, a chill sound or a moody sound? Um, I can also adjust like what key I want this song to be in. Let's say I want this to be in C major or something or C, yeah, there we go. C minor, C major. Um, oh, because I have it set on moody, it's not letting me choose C major. So I'm going to go to bright and I want this to, to be in a bright key like C major. Oh, one minute. Maybe I have to press regenerate. There we go. Regenerate. Ooh, some you know, it's it's AI, so um, uh, you know some of these came out uh, sounding really bad. So. Uh, if you have any fear of AI immediately taking over our our jobs, um, fear not. It's got a long ways to go uh, for at least music composition. But uh, this is this is a decent start. I'm going to take this um, track one and I'm going to go edit in studio. And just like that, uh, BandLab has generated four tracks of musical content for me to play with tweak, use as is. Um, right here, we've got our drum track we can listen to separately and edit, mess around with. Um, or I'll go to our track here. Or track. It looks a little wrong. We've got the melody track. <laughs> so that's uh, that's dissonant. So um, uh, I would obviously, if I was spending more time, tweak some of this. But maybe I want to keep the drum beat or the bass line. I can do that, and I could do just like we did earlier: save it, publish it, export it as an MP3, and I've got a song um, I can use on uh, uh, in a dance piece or a theater piece or or. Um, uh, in a composition, let's say we're doing a summer song challenge, uh, you songwriting challenge in day camp, you can um, uh, you can uh, share that song, export that as an MP3, and you've got stuff to work with. So that's all uh, I'm going to share in this tutorial. Again, this is just the beginning. Uh, we've gone through some basic edits you can do in BandLab, uh, fading in, fading out, cutting, uh, importing audio exporting audio, as well as uh, just just kind of uh, demonstrating the tip of the iceberg as far as BandLab's ability to uh, generate virtual instruments and songs with uh, AI. Uh, so if you're interested in, in um, uh, going deeper, I'd love to schedule a time to, uh, to, uh, to do a deep dive with you or a more specific tutorial if you have a particular need. Um, my email is justin.boats, B-O-T-Z, at chicagoparkdistrict.com, and I would be happy to help troubleshoot uh, any questions you might have around um, audio editing in Bad Lab, or if Band Lab isn't the tool for you, um, there are a number of others out there as well we could uh, explore together. Uh, but that's all for today. Thank you very much, and looking forward to exploring more sound with you in the future.